still seen one. Okay. Right. But the prices have uh, gone stupid. Uh, I saw one for seven hundred. All right. So I know it's uh, running late, so I won't. Uh, well, I'll, I'll go show. I'll go through the uh, monitor. So my name's Brian. I've. Uh, um, I don't know. I'm, I bought, built the kit, you know, years ago when I was a teenager and lost it. And then I don't know when I was a bit more richer, or more, had more money. Um, I found the Tech 1D about eight, four years ago, and then, um, but since then I was actually a software developer, so I kind of knew how to use the uh, tech computer, uh, at least knew how to program, and uh, that helped understand it, because when I built it, you know, 20, 30 years ago, whatever, more than that, uh, I kind of programmed some stuff, but I didn't really know how it worked. And... Um, one of the things, uh, that I collect these um, books and I've noticed there's a set out there. Uh, this is machine coding for beginners. It's actually pretty hard to understand. I, I only understood it when I went to university to learn uh, computer science. So, but this has, has Z80 code in there and pretty, it's actually a really basic book um, you know, to learn the Z80, but that's, that was something that uh, inspired me. Uh, so, um, and then I started just writing code for the for the tech and Lisa. The first pr project I did was, an, I actually bought the wrong CPU, like Z80 CPU, or it wasn't, I thought I bought the CPU, but it was the SIO chip, the Serial Input Output <laughs> Zigbot chip. And I thought, well, I've got this serial chip and I, I don't want to type in uh, manually on this keypad, so I, I actually figured out how to do Serial Input uh, I.O. on that chip and yeah, added an add-on and got that to work. So that was my first little intro to it. And then I just kept on writing code and updating the GitHub and just code, code, code. And you'll see a lot of it here. So I guess it was naturally that I'll, I'll write the monitor for this uh, for this uh, computer. So it's great having all this software, all this hardware, but let's have a look at the software. And I'll um, load it up. So when you turn it on, it does a hard reboot and it plays a little tune and that just, tells you that it's ready to go and hopefully you can see the uh, LCD screen there. It's a bit out of focus. Well, not much we can do about that. There's nothing on it. Is it not too bad? No, no, it's, no, it's, it's not, not too bad. bad. It's, it's not too bad. bad. Yeah, uh, okay, so initially we have um, a menu uh, uh, on the LCD screen. You can use up and down keys to go through the menu. Uh, press go to select the menu and press address to go back to the data entry view. So let's, uh, let's get some code into this uh, computer. So with the data entry view, we've got uh, like the like the last five bytes that go backwards, and also uh, the current byte you're on, and the next ten bytes. But underneath, we've actually got the disassembler of the code. So 46 here. This is just some random memory location. Is load B, uh, load HL, the address of HL to B. And down here, which you can kind of see, it says 4046 there. So this is the address and the uh, data. And it uses a similar concept to all the other monitors. So if you want to type in some data, you just type in the key. So 05, and it'll type it out there. You can see the disassembler is updated to uh, decrease B. It'll automatically update to the next memory location. So I don't need to add plus anymore, or up or down. So now, now let's do CD, call, and it'll just keep um, adding to the next memory location. If I want to change the address, I just hit the address button. The, the dots down here change to the address line, and I can type in address C100. All right, and um, yeah, and then you can see the code there, 318008, and that's load stack pointer um, with that address. Um, all right, so let's start, I'll just I'll just type in some code um, briefly. So I want to, I just want to output something to the segment out here, just just a light, light up the segment, so I'll do 3E, which is load A, O1, which is the port 1 for this uh, lighting up this particular digit. D301 to so that port. Um, 3E, 3E, let's put a G on there, which is actually E3. And then D302 lights up the particular LEDs on the segment. Um, I've also got, uh, we want to wait and to have a look at it, so there's like a key wait. A restart command which is CF, restart 08, and uh, C9. So C9 just returns. Alright, so I can go back now to home and it's got it there, but let's see if I've actually typed it in properly. You can do function D now and it'll actually give you the disassembler listing uh, on the four lines of disassembler. So load A01 out 
and you can scroll through that. That looks all pretty good. Home and press go. And you can see that there's a little G on that, that symbol there. But that's, um, you know, that's okay. Um, pretty average there. But let's make it a bit more exciting. Let's go to home, reset it. And in fact, I'll do go and press any other key. It'll exit back to the monitor. All right, but we want to change the code, but we don't want to sort of retype everything out again. So if I go to, um, I, I want to maybe, I want to write a program that increments or changes the segment maybe from zero to 256 or counts through it. So I need a particular counter. I'm going to use register B now. So if I go to, um, so three, uh, so instead of loading this A, the hard coded to G, uh, what I'll do is I'll do 06, which is load B register, to uh, let's with zero zero, um, and now I need to load B to A, but there's a, I need a space there. So what I can do is at this particular location I can do function and plus, yes. and what I will do is actually insert a byte. Now it's done a no no op in that particular location, but also on top of that it's actually moved. It's also adjusted all this all the two byte references, like the jumps and everything. So Fantastic. it can just run as normal. So now I can put in load A, which is uh, 7, 8, uh, load, load, load B to A. We output it to A, that's great. Um, okay. And we don't, we don't want to, uh, and then we need to increment that B. So let's, let's do 04, so increment B. And uh, we need to now just jump back to 4,000, back to the start basically. Or back to the load A, B, which is 4006. So I just do C3, so it's a jump, and I do 06 and 40. Okay, home. And I can see there just saying 8, like the letter 8 there, it's actually cycling through the. the um, it, it doesn't look like it's working properly. So um, I, I want to figure out what's going on here. So what I'll, I'll just cancel that out. And what I'll do is after the increment B, so increment B, which is 4009, I'll just insert another byte. And I'll call a breakpoint, which is a restart um, 30. I'll do home there. So now we'll press go on the screen here at that location at the program counter 400B. It's saying the B registers 1 and the A registers 0. And if I just keep tapping through, because it's looping through, I can just press the go command. Now I can see now B is actually increasing and A is also increasing. So it's doing what it's doing, but what's actually happening here, it's actually going too fast. I need to slow it down. So we've got breakpoints. We can debug that. So I can just press escape to go back out. So we'll just get down to this restart 30. We don't need the F7 anymore. Um, all right. So another feature of this monitor is that you can actually inter interact with the, the modules in the monitor itself. One of, the, one of the modules there is a timer, and it just delays, delays something. So I can interact with this um, module through this API, uh, mo through the API it's called. And, and I know that the, the time module, or the time delay module, requires like a 16-bit um, number to, to decrement by, and it's, it's number 21. There's a, there's a list of, of particular numbers for this particular setting. So what I'll do, restart the 31, I'll... Um, Instead of so I did the increment increment B, and uh, now I want to load the register C with with uh, 21, which is the the number for the time delay. Um, I want to now set up the HL register, which is the input of the delay, which is actually 21. So load HL will put a delay of 3,000 uh, 3,000 there, and then um, I need to actually call the 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 uh, restart or the API call. So we'll do the API call, which is uh, D7, restart 10. And then we'll just jump back. So C30640, okay, home and go. And you can see here, but it's actually it's just cycling through from zero to 255. So you can see how, as a developer, I can just play with it, I can look at the breakpoints, I can also interact with the monitor there's about 45 different monitor um, routines that we can actually interact with. That was just one of them. So that's a little example about how you can use the monitor to code and uh, you know, make it easy for you. But we had this menu, so let's have a look at this menu system. So if I, to go back to the menu, do function zero, and you can do Intel hex load, which we'll have a quick play with. But you've also got smart block copy. 
um, what Smart Block Copy does is it actually transfers a, a particular block of code, puts it in any other location, but also updates all the references, like the jump. So either jump to 4006, it'll actually move it to wherever it needs to move. So if I do Smart Copy, you've also got a, a parameter input now, and I can say that that code was at 400, the end address was 4012, and oh, let's move it to, I don't know, 2000. 2000, press go. That's just done it. If I go to the address 2000, there's the code. It's nice. in there, and if I press go, it runs it. So, uh, yeah, you can do a smart copy. You can also do uh, a block backup, so it doesn't actually update any of the code, it just moves it. So if you want to back it up to like an SD drive or any other location, you can then you know, put it, move it to one location to the other. Um, we've got some export. Um, yep. Um, so that's. Uh, uh, yeah. Now what I'll do is I'll just show you. No, no. I'll do this first. It's, I've, I've just got to change the screen around. I had a problem getting out, out of um, view, full screen view. Yeah, I'll fix that up. All right. So. We can also interact with the serial terminal, and I need that cable actually. Um, there's just a which one? Um, it was the U Mint Micro U USB Mini uh, Micro cable. Oh. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I did see that. It might be in my bag. I apologise. Yeah, 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 because oh, is that it? No, that's no. Michael, have you got a USB mini? Uh, no, not this bag. Mini or micro? Uh, mini. I got it. No, no. Got it. I'll yeah. just plug this to my trusty computer. Plug it into the tech. Onto the. USB, you've got to plug it in both ways now. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, right. so now I'll do an microphone. Ex microphone. Oh, microphone need that. Now, now I'll do an export to assembly. So I press, you can't see that, but this is the serial terminal. Actually, I'll connect to it. Now it's connected. And I've got the from and to address, press go, and it will output the what I just typed in to uh, serial on the to assembly. In, uh, into the serial terminal, so you can cut and paste it and save it. All right. Uh, what other options have we got here? We can export hex dump, so we can do a hex dump. Um, it's a particular standard hex dump. So, oops, sorry, you're right. Um, so I'll I'm fine. I'll uh, just change the address to something with a bit of code. Just do a uh, hundred bytes. C one. And uh, you can also uh, hex dump the code, so you can actually see the, the actual opcode or the, 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 the byte values. Um, you can also do a raw data output, so if you want to save it as a binary file, you can also do that, but I won't show you that because you can't read binary that easily. Well, a bit of effort. Alright, we can also load from the computer to the tech. So we'll do, um, I'll do a, a a binary uh, import binary file, and I need to I need to give it a start and end location because it's just a binary file. Um, so I'll, what I'll do is load the programmer. Okay. So now it's waiting for some input from the terminal. I need to, I need to send text file. And I'll load up just some binary. This is like okay, that's loaded. In fact, uh, okay, so that's that's actually loaded at four thousand, but naturally nothing changed there because this is it's got a smart um, option on this computer to protect a particular set of memory. So from location four zero 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 to seven FFF is a protected mode, and if you try to load something on there. While the, while the program is running, it won't update it, so you're not going to lose code. So I tried to actually load that at, at 4000, it didn't work, so I'll just do that again. Um, export, import binary file, I'll, I'll load it to 2000. Two, zero. Mm -hmm. Music. 
That's be something in the demo. Area. So that's loaded. That's loaded up in that memory, and that's actually tuned for the music routine. So inbuilt, there's a music routine. So if I go to the menu, in fact, you can't see this, but um, a music flick, routine. Flick it over. So this is someone added yeah, this. One of the tech to magazines has got. It's going to be too fast. You've got to turn the speed down. <laughs> is it too fast? Yeah, yeah definitely. Mm -hmm. No, it is. Yeah, I, think that, was, I think that one was written before the crystal was <laughs> <laughs> oh, This doesn't have variable speed? Yes. It does, yeah. But it is in the Okay, well, it's. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it's optional, I might yeah. not be about it. Another thing we've got here is Tiny Basic. So you can, um, you, you know, you need the you need the terminal the monitor there to, to do some Tiny Basic. Now, I'm going to write some code, but it's going to take too long, so I'll just cut and paste some code. Here's something I prepared before. Um, Fibonacci sequence, and I'll just cut and paste it. Instead of typing it, I'll cut and paste it, but I do need to slow it down a bit because I'll just put a delay in the transmit. Now it's just typing it out for me. I can do list. And there's a list, I can run it. Run it. Fibonacci sequence. Now I've got a bunch of different codes you can write, but that's just something. So yeah, trying basic is working. Um, and lastly, what I'll do is, uh, with something that comes naturally out of this board is the graphical uh, LCD screen. And I have these adapter boards which if someone's bought a computer today, I'll give you one of these boards. There's a small issue with the holes, one of the hole sizes, but uh, this should plug straight in and with the uh, graphical LCD board. Now, I just need to change the screen around, back to zoom. Kiss me, this sort of funny little way to get out of the screen, exit of the screen. Yeah, yeah. There it is. Zoom. Microphone too. Yeah, sorry. It's hard to tell, is it the transmitter or the receiver? Mm -hmm. All right, so I've done uh, most of the things that you can do, I've already shown you, but we haven't done the Intel hex load, so I'll hit that and in my serial terminal, I'll just load um, LCD, some LCD programs. So, oh, and I've got to get rid of that delay, sorry, it's way too long. That again. Okay, much quicker. I just got to get back to zoom. Um, view. It's a full screen. And then full screen. So it's actually loading. You can see that the bottom LCD uh, segment here is flashing, and that's saying there's something happening. We're moving. We're getting data loading into the into the tech by uh, Intel hex format. This is how I program. I write it in the assembler on my computer, load it up like this. But this is a pretty big program, and it says pass. So that worked. So I've got some graphical LCD programs that I that I've written. Um, let's do um, four thousand. We'll press go. So this is um, just you. It's, it includes a graphical library. This monitor, mm -hmm. so you can you can uh, write lines, you can do circles, you can do squares, you can plot points. This is um, 1980s mm -hmm. magazine. It came out with a, a listing of um, uh, Apple Basic or whatever to uh, write Alfred E. Newman, and I just converted it, the the X Y plotting points to you know uh, this format for the size of the LCD screen. And I've slowed it down so it, it looks like it's not, it's a, you know running under a basic slow computer. It, can, it does go a lot faster to load, mm -hmm. and it's almost there. Um, how many how many bytes is that program? Uh, I can't remember, <laughs> but it's mostly data. Yeah. And there we go, that's finished. Yeah. Um, you can actually, if I go down to four thousand and twenty-two, this is the quick load. So this is how this is how quick it loads. <laughs> there you go. So you can. You can see how quick it loads without without me slowing it down. That's one example. Um, another example I've got is um, so I've written um, a maze solving or maze generating algorithm, and 
the uh, again using the graphical library. This one, this one isn't. Well, it's not super complicated, but it's using a reverse backtrack algorithm, which um, it sort of goes down a path. Once it gets to the end, it will backtrack. So you can see the the actual indicator is backtracking now, defining a new un, un, unattended or new vacant square, and it pushes through the wall and then comes back out again. And eventually, it will create a maze. And all you got to do is is open up one end or start at one end and end at the other end and you can solve it. It's a complete maze. So it's kind of interesting. You can kind of watch this for hours maybe. But <laughs> It'll get to the end of the time. If you've got a few, minute, few seconds, I'll, we'll wait till it finishes. There is a small problem. Sometimes it doesn't end properly, but There's hopefully it will. Okay. So you can see it's uh, backtracking now. We'll go up to there. Um, where is it? Does it keep track of where it's been? Oh, yeah. It's, so it's, it's got a, like a stack system yeah, where it's yeah. recording all the x, y squares, yeah. and then it will go back again. It will add more if it needs to. And eventually it gets to the top, and then it goes quick. Okay. And it should be back. So there we go. It yeah. comes to the end. Right. Well so that's that. And then and can the, you export that? The last... Yeah. Sorry? Can you export that image? Oh, uh, yeah, well, it's kind of there, I guess. There, there, there's, maybe. Oh, there's an there's a internal memory saying X, you know, what's, what walls are open and whatever. Okay. But this one actually, I mean, I've got a video on this. So, in fact, I was going to say, um, you know, you might have known my voice from the Ready Z80 YouTube channel. Um, that's me. I don't know, is anyone subscribing to the Ready? So, about two years ago, I had a, a fan club, and my, my mum was the only member. <laughs> so now I've got a few more, which is pretty, which is pretty good. Uh, look, I don't know. It's all right, but it's mostly around the tech computer, which is pretty cool. And it's pretty powerful. You can see what the tech can do. And I'll just show you one last example. Um, if I do address 3000. So this this is... Um, a, 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 I wrote some wireframe 3D rotations working on the graphic <laughs> library. This little screen here actually demonstrates all the functions of the graphic library. You've got um, filled in boxes, you've got text, you've got circles, filled in circles, you've got line drawing. Um, yeah, and so, and this tech word here is just plotting pixels. So you can plot pixels, you can do a picture if you like. Alright, so let's do a cube, press cube, and there's my cube, and I can rotate it. Um, so that looks, I'm pretty happy with that. Using, you know, a rotation matrix. Uh, I'm only rotating at 10 degrees. Oop, it looks like it's skewed there. But it's, you know, some, as long as the perspective sometimes a bit out, but there we go, it's back again. You can, and I've got other other triangle pyramids, but my favourite is what Mark is wearing. He's um, elite. I used to play elite, dangerous, and or elite. You know, back in the, the 1980s on the Apple II computer. So you know, I've got a I've got a cobra here, which you know can rotate around. And on top of the rotation, you can also zoom in out. Zoom in and out, and, and uh, yeah. So you can see the tech is. I mean, it looks pretty simple computer, but it's quite powerful if you can, you know, get your hands on it. But I have provided the graphical library, so people can draw boxes and they can start working on it. They've got the API access. There's about 40 different routines that you can access. I only just showed you one, the time delay, um, plus also the editing features where you can move chunks of code from here to there. Um, like like this code here is quite large, complicated. I can move this to, um, in fact, I'll do it now. Um, you, can't see, oh no, you can't see on the screen. So smart block copy. I'll do uh, three thousand to um, three fff. I know it fits in there. Go to two thousand. So I'm going to move that that three D rotational stuff to another totally different new location. It's done it now. And if I go to address two thousand. Press go, it runs. So yeah, That's fully amazing. relocation of code. All right, um, and last thing, I'll just go to the menu, or back on the menu again. Right down the end here, um, you've got the settings, so you can just toggle the key beep if it's uh, kind of annoying. And there's not many settings really. Um, there's also auto address increment. So every time I type in a byte, it will increment to the next address. You can stop that if you want to hit the plus all the time. And lastly is, um, uh, um, and I've got credits here, so you know, thanks yeah. to Mark who designed it. I only had a few spaces put in here, maybe you know, C you know, brains brainchild. That's what I wanted to put, but didn't fit. Coda Craig Hart also spent a lot of time on this. Really, he's he's been the tech guy. You know, he, he's a, he's really helped a lot. Uh, but he's in South Australia. Ian is here, and James is also a tester. And the original design by John Hardy and Ken Stone. So. Uh, yeah, that, look, that's a brief overview. I know it's sort of getting late. Uh, just some minor things. 
um, with the channel and that. I've got some boards here that I've done in the past, but I've, I've also got these. If, if you want, I've got a stack of these. Um, the, the Tech Magazine had this GameCube. I sort of redid this. So if you want a board, you can take one. I've got some instructions for that. If you've got the graphical, uh, if you've got a Tech One G now, you can get one of these, um, and that will plug in a graphical LCD screen straight onto your um, Tech. Um, and I've also got a micro comp <laughs> here. Um, if, you, if you've got ten dollars, I can sell you a board or something for the micro comp, and I can show you that. But I'll just do it personally or privately. <laughs> uh, when John's not looking, in a dark house. Oh, oh, and dark also, sorry, what, I didn't. We, I'm not going to demonstrate, but you've got um, a keyboard here. So a fully keyboard, you can just plug it into the, the side connector over here. There's a dip switch, you just flick, and this the keyboard will operate just as normal, like the keypad. Um, and also, I've got a little, it's also got a joystick port as well. This is like a little joystick, I've just put it together, I just up, down, left, right, you know, the basic um, 80s kind of Amstrad joystick. That plugs in, that works. We've also got a diagnostic ROM. Um, and maybe I'll just finish with that. Actually, I'll just turn. Do you want to run my one? Why? Because it's copy out the iPad. Oh, the. Um, yeah. Yeah. Bear with me, please. Do you want the diagnostic in yours? Yeah. Actually, it's already in there, so just put it to the second bank. So lastly, um, to test this, we really want to make sure everything kind of works properly hardware-wise. So Craig Hart wrote the diagnostics ROM in conjunction with me writing the monitor. Um, and this is what it, it, it does do. Do I just want to run the... Um, the burning. The burning, yep. Uh, yeah, so this, this, this actually goes through to make sure the LCD works, the, uh, a whole bunch of things. So he's, Got some fancy thing going on there. It's uh, going through all the letters of the uh, letter screen. It's got uh, a welcome message, and this is kind of good to have. We'll ship with. I think we're, we're going to ship with this diagnostic. Yes. We're also yes. going to ship with um, the monitor Mon Three, which I just showed you. Also Beamon, which is the, another monitor that I modified from Jmon, and also the original monitor Mon, Mon One. So you can you can still do the original code. You know, grab your tech magazine books and start coding away. So this, this um, uh, my computer is the old beta, so it doesn't have the flashing LEDs. So this is a new thing with the the, uh, the disco LEDs. <laughs> and so this is a little good program. You can just sit, sit it there and make sure everything's working. It's now testing the, 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 the LED bar here. Night Rider. There's <laughs> <laughs> a kit for that as well. <laughs> uh, and there's also the LCD, the LCD which you can't see. Yeah, that's good. So the 8x8's there, but I don't think we've got time to demonstrate that. I've got Space Invaders that I wrote as well, and it's all on GitHub. And do that. Alright, so uh, yeah, that's uh, the monitor. Uh, hopefully that's enough to, to get you going. When you get your computer, you'll get the monitor, you can start playing with it. Hopefully we'll get a lot more people writing code. Or just experimenting, learning about the Z80, and um, and creating some um, interesting things. That it doesn't have to be complicated. Post it online and share the code. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's like like the Z80. Someone asked me like, how did you learn Z80 code? It's like, well, there's not a lot to it. It's not that complicated. You add some numbers, you delete, subtract some numbers, move some bits. But it can be quite clever in the way you program it. And if you you know, as you can see, there's some of the, the programs that are written. Uh, you know, quite complicated, but you can do some some wonderful things with this um, computer here. There we go, calculating the pi. So this will just, uh, yeah, this will just sit there and um, yeah, go through the process again. All right, thank you. And uh, are there are any questions? I guess for me, let's sort of wrap up. I'll go get Adrian. Yeah, I'm sort of taking a, a small, I had to do, I spent about last month writing this monitor, like every day, so <laughs> this is my last day, I'm going to have a little break. <laughs> I think it's all working well, um, it seems to be pretty stable, but uh, I don't know what I'll do next for my other videos, uh, but I, I, I don't have any pressure now to just produce videos, I'll just do it when, uh, on 
on that space. But what I might do is actually a Tech 1G video just introducing how it all works, hopefully sell some more copies. And, um, and, and in fact, next year I plan to actually convert this GLC board into a terminal, a serial terminal, so we don't actually connect to my computer at all. Just remove that connection and do everything on the GL, on the Tech 1G. I think that would be quite amazing. So, and it's just a fully standalone computer, which is which is kind of unique um, with uh, these modern Z80 systems. Wonderful. Okay, thanks. All right. Thank you very much.